Today, I'll be showing you guys how to remove scratches and swirls from a black car. When the lights are off or you're not up close, the car looks immaculate. But when you actually get up close and personal with the car, you actually start seeing all the imperfections that are actually on the paint. What we're covering today is scratches and swirls. On the hood, it has contamination. The car needs help. The car is going to thank me once I finish polishing it because you guys are going to see a tremendous big before and after. I'm going to be reviving the paint and removing the scratch and swirls. But before we get into the polishing part, there's going to be one crucial step that I already did is washing the car. So I already washed the car using clean slate. Next up, it's going to be claying the car. Now, why should we clay a car before we polish? It's going to help me remove any contaminants that might be sitting on the surface. So like this, whenever I start using my compound or polish, it's not going to be pushing those contamination deeper into the paint and causing more scratch and swirls. Now this clay bar, like I told you guys, is light to medium, but every single car is different. If your car has never been clayed, then you might be on the heavy side. If your car is fairly new and you keep it in the garage, you might be on the blue side, which is light. If you guys have any questions, drop them down below. We'll answer them for you guys. Now, how do you actually use this clay bar? The best way to use it is going to be pairing it with clay luber. Now, whenever you open up this clay bar, I already went ahead and removed a small portion, but it actually comes in a big rectangle. And as you guys can see inside, I left the plastic film over it, but on my hand side, I actually have no type of film whatsoever. It's a brand new clay bar. And if I'm actually quiet, you guys can hear how sticky this substance actually is. It's almost like gum. Next up, I'll grab my microfiber towel. I'll walk over to the surface of the vehicle. Now we're gonna be having a control side and we're gonna be using a result side. So that's going to be my control side. I'm not going to do anything but just wash it. Next up on this side, this is going to be the side where I want to get all my results. Now, there's going to be rock chips on some certain cars like right here and right here on the hood. Unfortunately, that is too deep on the paint. This is not going to come out. But the scratches and swirls that are not so deep will come out and you'll start, start seeing clarity. Before we get my clay luber, what I like to do is knead out my clay bar into a three width finger. So like this, I have enough coverage to clay the surface of the vehicle. Now that's in a patty, I'll get my clay luber. I'll spray some onto the surface. And you want to be very generous with the clay luber. The reason being is anytime you drag a clay bar across a paint that is not well lubricated, you can cause marring and there's going to be more of a headache. Now marring, what it ends up showing is just like scratches and linear motions. But whenever you're using a clay bar with high amount of lubricity, you're going to be preventing all marring occasions. So as you guys can see, I'm going side to side, up and down, never in circular motion. The reason being is if I do go in circular motion and I get high amounts of contamination on the surface of the paint and now it's on my clay bar, what ends up happening, I might be rubbing that back onto the clay and back onto the painted surface. But if I just take a quick moment to show you guys up close and personal, you guys can see all of that is just contamination that is coming off, onto, off of the paint onto my clay bar. Now what I will do in this occasion, I will get my clay bar, I will re-knead it, and continue with another clean side. How you know when to toss it out is whenever you remold your clay bar and you can no longer get a clean side. So if you do two to three cars that are heavily contaminated, what I recommend you do is just toss out that piece, come back with a new piece for the next car that you're going to be detailing. And whenever you're gliding the clay bar across the surface of the paint, you start feeling the contamination pull off you, you stop feeling the dragging effect onto your clay bar. It gets smoother and smoother and smoother. Put my clay bar up top. Here's a pro tip for you guys. Put it on top of the sprayer. Put your bottle off to the side where it can't fall down. Next up, we'll get a clean microfiber towel. Inspect it for any tags. If it does have a tag, remove it. Put the tag in a safe place. And now we will just wipe down the residue to inspect our work. Okay, so I just finished buffing off the clay luber off the surface. Now it's time to inspect. Smooth as glass, smooth as glass, smooth as glass compared to contamination, smooth as glass. Next up is going to be actually choosing the right polisher and the right polish or compound that I'll be using on this paint. The polisher I'm using today is the Torque 15 DA. Now the Torque 15 DA is a super awesome polisher to have as a beginner or professional. The Torque 15 DA has full digital. You can turn it on. Once you turn it off and turn it back on, it completely resets. 
It also has a perfect handle so your hand does not get tired whenever you're polishing. It has a 15 millimeter throw and it has a five inch backing plate. Now the polishing pad that I'll be using today is going to be the orange pad. Now this orange pad is great to be used with compounds. I'll center it on the bagging plate. I'll smack it on. I like to turn the polisher bagging plate with the pad on just to ensure you guys, obviously through the bag I can see, the bagging plate is not showing. Now the Quantum HexLogic uh, polishing pad has a, a, such a cool feature on it. The edges are actually flared out. So like this, you have an even bagging plate but you have more pad to play with. Like this, you never have the opportunity to ding up your paint with the bagging plate at high speeds. So I'll reattach it, spin it, we're good to go. Next up, the compound I'll be using today is going to be C4 compound. C4 compound, all it's going to do, it's designed to remove heavy amounts of scratches and swirls. And then after I'm done using C4, I need to repolish out the surface to bring out an optical shine on the surface of the car. I'll shake up the pot before using it. Open up the spout and I'll be adding one, two, three, four, five. Five diamond sized drops of C4 onto my pad. In my secondary spray bottle, I already have pad conditioner. Now what pad conditioner is going to do is going to moisten your pad so you, re you reduce friction on the surface of the paint. I'll put the cord over my shoulder to avoid hitting the car. Now we will go to the surface of the paint and I will blotch out the product to avoid it from splattering all over my, on my shirt. And then you're gonna turn on your machine, which I already turned it on. You're gonna bump it up to speed setting one just to spread out the product evenly. So what I like to do whenever I'm working on any type of hood, A, B, C, and D. So I'm going to spread out the product like from here on. And then on the second pass, I'll start doing that side. So like this, you avoid working in a high amount of area especially if you're, uh, you're polishing outside under a tent, always stay in a controlled area because heat is going to break down the product and remove scratch and swirls. And like this, if you're working under a tent or at home where it's not well ventilated, you're going to control the compound or polish you're working with. Okay, so now that I just finished spreading out the product, I'm going to put the machine back on the surface of the paint, turn my machine on, and I'm going to be bumping up to speed setting six. Now this is on a dual action polisher. If you are using a rotary polisher, I just recommend going to speed setting three and turn on the machine away from the paint. If you guys want to see a video on how to polish with a rotary, let us know in the comments down below. But today, we're using a dual action. So bump it up to speed setting six, working the product side to side, up and down until it turns clear translucent, then we'll buff it off. Okay, so I just pull off off the surface of the paint. I put my polisher off to the side on my other hand. I grab my microfiber towel and just buff off the residue left behind from C4 compound. And you already start seeing an amazing shine and reflection. Now, like I mentioned to you guys before, what C4 is designed to do is just designed to remove deep scratches and swirls. After you finish using C4 compound, you need to refine the finish with a polish to bring out the vibrant shine and reflection you're actually looking for. So let me just finish buffing all this off, finish up this side, and then after that, I'll get back to you guys. Okay. 
Okay guys, so we just finished with C4 compound. Now it's time to refine the finish using a white polishing pad and P4 perfection polish. Now P4 polish is designed to remove micro scratches and swirls that unfortunately C4 compound cannot remove while refining the finish. But one thing I want to tell you guys as well, Alex came in and asked me, what's this white thing right here and over there? And I told him those are rock chips. Unfortunately, that's not going to come out. So I just want to bring that up because if he asked that question, you guys might be asking that question as well. Same exact concept, five dime size drops onto my polishing pad. And that is all I need to do the first section on this hood. Next up, I'll get my pad conditioner, spray some onto my polishing pad. I will go to the area and the same thing you want to do all over again. Now this is a two-step polish. There's going to be different types of scenarios. One, you might just be able to get away with C4 compound, but in this occasion, I believe using a two-step polish such as C4 compound and P4 polish is going to give me a much better finish on this black Tesla because my Bessie and the Tessie cannot be driving dirty or a scratch of a car. So we're gonna spread it out on speed setting one, work it in on speed setting six, then buff it off until it turns clear translucent. Let's get right into it. Okay guys, so we just finished removing all the excess P4 polish that was suspended on the surface of the vehicle with a workhorse microfiber towel. Now it's just time to unveil the big before and after to you guys. Now, before we started with this detail or this polishing demonstration, we started off with a super neglected black Tesla. You guys can see a big before and after. On this side that we just polished, you see clarity. Compared to this side, it almost look, it looks like it has a hazy layer on it. If you guys look from it on this side, you guys will see a big before and after. If you guys want to pick up these products today or any tools or accessories, micro fiber towels that I use in today's video, you can find them down below in the links or you can hop onto our website right now or you can also drive down to your local detail garage. As always, I'm Henry. We'll see you guys next time right here at the Chemical Guys Detail Garage.